Welcome to this week's edition of Investor Africa. I'm Bronwyn Nielsen. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll be taking an in-depth look at the business and investment opportunities in Tanzania. Tanzania covers 948,000 square kilometers and is home to 43 million people with its capital city of Dar es Salaam. Like many African countries, it's reliant on agriculture, which accounts for more than 25% of GDP, 85% of its exports and employs 80% of the country's workers. It has vast natural resources and Tanzania is the only country in the world where the precious gemstone tanzanite is found. After South Africa and Ghana, the country is also the third largest producer of gold on the continent, which it exports to China, India and Japan. Import partners include South Africa, India and China, from which consumer goods, machinery and equipment is imported. Although Tanzania ranks among the world's poorest countries, the country has averaged around a 7% GDP growth rate per year between 2000 and 2008 on the back of strong gold production and tourism. High inflation driven by rising food and fuel prices, coupled with chronic energy shortages, dampened Tanzania's economic growth in 2011. The World Bank, however, predicts a GDP growth rate for 2012 and 2013 will reach 7%. Then there are discoveries of offshore gas deposits, which are now estimated at more than 10 trillion cubic feet. This is expected to boost domestic growth in the medium term. But Tanzania's tax incentives and exemptions to the mining companies and firms operating the export processing zones have lost revenue as much as $288 million between 2008 and 2011, according to a recent report. And while there is excitement about further gas exploration, some citizens still remain sceptical as to whether the ordinary Tanzanian will also reap the benefits. Well, joining me in the studio to take a closer look at Tanzania as a business and investment destination is Nick Matthews, Director, Advisory and Head Mergers and Acquisitions at KPMG. Scott Nelson, HOD, ENS Africa. Also joining us from our bureau in Nairobi is Sandeep Kapre. He's the CEO of BDO East Africa. Gentlemen, thanks very much for your time. Just coming off the, the back of our introduction, Tanzania is, in terms of the East African community, and Nick, perhaps I throw this to you, if you look at the five countries that make up that block, in terms of the ease of doing business, Tanzania ranks fourth. So it's not highly regarded in terms of that East African community when it comes to the ease of doing business. What is the biggest problem that we're facing in that respect? Look, what you need to appreciate, Bronwyn, is that Tanzania has come from a socialist background. So uh, between uh, 1967 Arusha Declaration and right up until <coughs> the early 1990s, it was a socialist state. And that has uh, obviously impacted on the, uh, the structures and the way of doing business. So that historical legacy will certainly take some time to overcome in terms of getting institutions in place and practices and policies which make business easy. So I think, uh, in fact, Tanzania has come a long way, but uh, clearly it will be some way off uh, in particular Kenya which has got a long history of, of a, let's say, a capitalist uh, business model. Do you find that it is starting to learn from other experiences within the East African community and deploy those learnings in territory? Scott? Yeah, I, th I think there's, um, there's a learning curve, uh, as we've just discussed, and th there are lessons to be learned from some of the neighbouring countries who've had perhaps more radical um, experiences. So Rwanda, for example, is a, is a good example of somewhere which has had to you know, come from you know, atrocity to success in a short period of time, um, has not been so reliant or had the access to mineral wealth that other countries have and has therefore had to go sort of out of its way to make an accommodating environment for business uh, and create a, an attractive environment purely from the, the level of regulation and the ease of doing business in that country. Sandeep, let's throw it to you in Nairobi. How do you feel about Tanzania sitting in Kenya at the moment? And what is happening on the ground in terms of leveraging business through the East African community and into Tanzania? I think Tanzania has a great opportunity to uh, access the East African community market. Uh, in fact, there's, there's an unfounded fear that Kenya might, uh, if, they, if they remove the non-tariff barriers, Kenya might become the only sole provider of uh, manufactured goods, but that, that should not really be uh, uh, the point of view from Tanzania, uh, Tanzania's standpoint. 
if you really look at what's happening, uh, the cost of production in Tanzania can be substantially lower once Songo Songo and all the energy projects come on stream properly and the cost of uh, electricity goes down from 20 cents per kilowatt hour to 10 cents per kilowatt hour, that kind of uh, efficiency. And then the geographical uh, structure of, of uh, Tanzania makes it extremely easy for them to transport goods to Eastern Congo that's outside the EAC, uh, uh, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, and, and Zambia as well. So I think if Tanzania really gets its house in order, and as uh, rightly put uh, by the previous speaker, that it's come from a socialist background, it's made uh, a lot of strides, and going forward, there's going to be a lot more activity in Tanzania uh, as we see it. In terms of economic activity, gold and tourism leading the way, do you think that will continue to be the status quo going forward, especially with the, the gas discoveries? Yeah, I certainly see that continuing. Um, in terms of the current projects underway, Barrica have got a lot of new projects which are being developed, gold, gold mines in particular. Uranium is, is another mining area and diamonds. So, you know, the, unlike South Africa, it's a fairly young gold mining industry. And of course, the prospects in terms of natural gas, which are being discovered offshore, are, are, are another factor. So, natural resources will certainly uh, continue to, to drive growth. But I also believe, uh, as with many other African countries in East Bonham, and I've, I've mentioned to you it before, the consumer facing industries also have uh, huge prospects. I mean, Approximately 45% of the population is, is, um, is uh, uh, under the age of 14. Um, <clears throat> approximately 75% of the population is rural. Uh, but, but the combination of urbanization, uh, uh, growth in income, and the demographic dividend of these uh, young consumers emerging, I think create huge opportunities for the consumer-facing industries, uh, retail, FMCG, financial services, and the like. Who's taking up uh, opportunity here in the consumer-facing industries in terms of companies coming in and saying, we want to own this space, Scott? Well, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's a very important East African economy, and people are building consumer-facing businesses not really country by country, but rather on a platform basis so that they can sort of generate a platform to um, you know, grow the grow and scale the business across the continent. So, we've seen it across you know everything from the telco sector to the retail sector to things that underpin the consumer-based economy. And Tanzania, you know, remains an important component if you're building a strategy, a consumer-based strategy in an African context. Sandeep, in, in terms of conversation on the ground, is everyone very excited about the the gas discoveries that we've seen of late? Yes, there's a lot of excitement on the natural resources side and of course the government, apart from the natural resources area, uh, is looking at uh, improving conditions so that manufacturing sector, retail sector uh, can grow uh, to target the growing uh, middle class and the urban population as well as uh, targeting the, the neighboring countries as I mentioned earlier. I want to focus a little on the, the challenges that are specific to Tanzania. From an infrastructure perspective, how developed is the territory? Uh, look, they're, they're huge, huge challenges, Bronwyn. Um, um, power in particular is a major challenge. Uh, I think a lot is being done in that space, but there needs to be further investment. And as your um, uh, news clip uh, uh, indicated, the lack of, of power does constrain especially the manufacturing industry, but the broader business community. So that is the one uh, key constraint. Um, clearly, skills development remains, remains an issue. Um, uh, the quality of, of the education is improving, but it still uh, uh, needs, needs further work. So I would say skills and power are, are some of the, the major constraints, and then just general infrastructure, roads, and transport remain, remain issues. Power is something that we highlight in every conversation that we have with regard to Africa, but these regional power pools, are they going to bring forward dividends in, in that respect going forward? Do you think that Tanzania will benefit specifically? I, I, th I think that the, the challenges facing Tanzania are not that different from the challenges facing a number of the, of the bordering countries and countries in that area. I mean, the, the power remains a problem. I think there have been some improvements. I, I think that what's been done should generate some real difference. The infrastructure side again. It's I mean we've sort of said this and we say it over and over again. It's it's a challenge and it's it's you know. It's and it's not going to go away anytime soon. No, and everyone always says it's amazing. You can generate seven percent GDP with infrastructure and power and, and, and road and rail as, as in the state that it's in. So that's a sort of general African comment that you know what has been achieved with what's available is, is truly remarkable. Imagine what could be achieved if if you know the proper tools to run 
a, a developed economy were, were, were available. I think the other one that, that is, again, a general African comment, but I mean, it has reared its head in a Tanzanian context quite a lot recently, is, is this a general confidence in organs of the state? And that, that sort of whole issue. You mean of political stability? Political stability and dependability of the key institutions in the country. I mean, from, sorry, from a legal perspective, that, that is often one of the key drivers of inbound investment into a country is having that confidence that the institutions who are there to underpin the, the growth and the safety of your investment are functional and functional as they should be. And I think that's, that's it's, it's an African issue, but it, it's, it's something which certainly gets mentioned in the Tanzanian context relatively frequently. Well, there we go, Sandeep. Uh, Scott, obviously mentioning political stability, I'm going to go straight for the jugular and say how often do you have to deal with potential corruption when you are transacting in Tanzania? Well, uh, we've heard from a lot of our clients that there are issues as around corruption. But again, going back to infrastructure uh, issues, I mean, there are significant uh, advantages in, in Tanzania. You have a large uh, gas find, so there can be electricity generated not only for Tanzania's use, but for export purposes. You have uh, hydroelectricity, you have thermal power, so there, there should be enough electricity for actual exports. Uh, as far as transport is concerned, if they get their uh, port issues sorted out and the Tanzania Railways Corporation and Tazara Railways sorted out, uh, you can have intermodal transport and uh, Dar es Salaam can quickly replace Mombasa as the major port for the East African region. So there can be tremendous opportunities that, that we see in Tanzania. There is some excitement, there are some new investments getting into that area. And people are looking at you know, lake transport to, to add on to the railway transport, thereby reducing costs. So if the investments come in, the costs go down, Tanzania suddenly becomes quite an attractive uh, investment destination for a lot of people. Another challenge, Nick, that's been highlighted over and over again is, uh, or are rather, the, the shallow capital markets that, that Tanzania faces. And I think that's possibly being exacerbated by the current volatility and uncertainty in the global environment. Yeah, look, I mean, I think the only route for Tanzania is foreign direct investment, and there has been some uh, reasonable flows in, in that regard. The capital markets are, 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 I won't say non-existent, but virtually. Uh, the J the uh, stock exchange in Dar es Salaam has uh, only a few listed counters and liquidity is very thin. Um, so I think uh, raising capital in Tanzania is, 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 is not really a, a meaningful option and uh, serious investors have to come with their own checkbooks. Do you think that the policymakers, as you put it earlier, understand the urgency with which they need to uh, help with the, the transacting in Tanzania to attract that FDI rather than to scare investors off? Um, I, I, yes and no. I mean, I, I think that um, generally people have figured out that the, the proper handling of, of corruption and the creating a stable environment is the only way you're going to really drive proper investment into the country. People always say, especially in a kind of a developed market context, when investors are looking at putting money into Africa, they say, well, how do you deal with corruption? Well, when you deal with corruption by one, knowing what it is and sorting it out, you just can't invest in a corrupt environment. And then funds who are, who are ethically compliant and have covenants who obviously require them to, to sort of not invest in those kind of environments. And obviously the U legislation in the US and the UK creates those problems and challenges you simply can't go there. So the governments and the regulators in, in many countries, Tanzania in particular, are, I think are extremely attuned to the fact, not least given the lack of, of any meaningful capital market in which to raise capital, that, that FDI is the way they have to go. And if they want to want the investment to flow, they need to have an environment where it's, it's you know, the people are comfortable to flow money into the country. We're going for a quick commercial break. More on Invest Africa and Tanzania when we return. Don't go anywhere.